this custom camera can take photos like this with a single pixel. Before I get into the details of how I did this, let's go over how an ordinary camera works. When you take a picture with a normal camera, a glass lens like this focuses the light from the scene onto an image sensor. That sensor is a grid of pixels that measure how much light is hitting them. Each pixel's measured light intensity and color is read by the camera's controller, and the image is constructed from all of those intensity values. Sharper images just have more pixels in them. Okay, if that's how a camera works, how do you take a photo with one pixel? By moving a single pixel around and taking the measurements one at a time, we can create the same effect as a full camera sensor. Now, sure, it'll be slower than a normal camera, but it'll still work. To figure out how to focus the image correctly, I made this device called a camera obscura. The camera obscura uses a lens to focus light like a regular camera, but instead of a sensor, you can project the image onto whatever you want. Here, I'm using some wax paper. As you can see, it's pretty clear. Now that I can focus the image, I need to measure it. For that, I have to build a way to move this sensor around. To move the pixel anywhere in the image, let's first focus on moving it in one dimension. I can make a geared sled with a slot in the middle for the sensor and mount it on rails. A gear on the servo will allow me to control the sled's position, the rails will make sure the sled can only move in one direction, and the slot will keep the sensor free to move in the other direction. If I copy this design, rotate it to act on the other axis, and put them back to back, I can control the sensor in the other dimension. Now, I can move the sensor anywhere on the focal plane by moving these two sleds. My first design moved how I wanted, but it didn't have a way to mount the servo or the second axis. Later designs included heat set insert holes for mounting the second axis, but the servo mount pegs were too close together, or the gears didn't line up correctly, or the slot was too thin to fit a sensor tube. After I reprinted the parts with my improvements, it was time to assemble it all. I subtracted supports, installed inserts, and mated the mounts. Then, I secured the servos, slid sleds into slots, and guided in the gears. I'm really happy with this design. Each axis works well independently, and they even move well together. Well, that was weird. Like I was saying, the design moves pretty well. I really don't know what's going on here. I double checked the timing pulses that are driving them and tried new patterns. I tried new power supplies, and I replaced the servos with new ones. No matter what I do, these servos eventually ignore my commands and jam themselves. But that's okay, it's a reason for me to make an upgrade I was worried I was gonna have to make anyways. Stepper motors are much more precise and will give much more granular control over the movement of the camera. After another round of 3D printing, I have a model that moves really well. Only one piece of the puzzle remains, the light sensor. Really quick, before I explain how I made the light sensor work, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and leaving a comment for more. It really helps the channel grow and I'd really appreciate it. All right, back to the video. When bits of light called photons hit the photosensor, they kick off electrons that generate an electrical current. In dim light, fewer photons hit the sensor, but in bright light, more photons hit, resulting in a higher current. I ended up choosing this tiny phototransistor to try to maximize the potential resolution. With everything fully assembled, it's time for the first test. By pointing the camera directly at this light, if I have it focused correctly, we should see a very clear block of white, surrounded by various shades of gray. It's done! Let's take a look! Now, the quality isn't great, but there are a lot of issues that we can resolve to make the quality a lot better. The first is with the motors. I've hooked up an oscilloscope to the sensor, so we can see exactly what the camera sees. Now, right now, you can see that if I move my hand in front of the sensor, or turn the lighter on or off, we see different voltages. But watch what happens when I turn on the stepper motors. Now, when I move my hand in front of it, or even turn the light off completely, you can see that there's almost no difference. But luckily, this is an easy fix. The motor controllers have an enable pin, so we can turn them off, take a pixel, and then turn them back on when we need to move. But this makes a new problem. If you look closely, you'll see that every time the motor turns back on, it jumps a little. This may not seem like a big deal, but over time, this error will add up to make it impossible to know where the pixel sensor is. 
I spent days assembling gears with magnets in them and trying to get magnetic encoders to work, but I couldn't get them to communicate with the camera's controller. <sighs> so I did what I should have done all along. I glued some limit switches into the camera and used them to calibrate the sensor's location after every pixel. This bag holds all the prototypes I made before it finally works the way I wanted. So I was testing out this shield I made to block light from coming in the back of the camera, and it was working well to begin with, but if you see there, it turns white at the end of the photo, so I need to see what's going on. I'm going to take a look at these wires. Okay, that'll do it. I guess I need to do some repairs. After fixing the light sensor, I 3D printed a longer light shield that should hopefully reduce the strain on the wires, and I reassembled the camera for a final test. All right, so here we have the full setup. I have a power supply, which supplies power to the stepper motor drivers here, and they drive the stepper motors that move the pixel around, and then the camera data goes down to this RP2040 board, which sends the data over to this laptop and records the photo. Enough waiting, let's take some photos. You may be asking, Chandler, with all these high quality photos, why don't you take your idea to market? You could be making millions. And while the photo quality is unmatched, the biggest issue is time. This selfie I took is only 32 by 32 pixels, and it took over 20 minutes to capture. That means a 4K image would take over eight months. So while I think this project is an absolute success, it won't be replacing my phone's camera anytime soon. If there's something you'd like to see me take a picture of with this camera, or an upgrade you'd like to see me do, leave a comment down below. I have a few ideas on how to upgrade it to make it faster, higher quality, and even to add color. If you want to see more from me, hit subscribe, and maybe check out this video, where I modded a Power Wheels car to race at Open Sauce 2023. Thanks for watching.